Henry. He's still Devin. He's still Devin. All right. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to the first episode of the Talking Pieces podcast. I have two lovely others here. Would you guys give some quick introductions? Dai, you want to go first? Uh, yeah, sure. Hi, I'm Dai. I stream on Twitch, play Tetris a lot. That's pretty much it. I mean... <laughs> nice. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, hi, it's what? It's me, Egg Fried Range. Um, you can find me at twitch.tv slash egg fried range. Also on Twitter at twitch.tv slash egg fried range. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, we didn't plan this out very well, but, uh, yeah, you can follow us all. We're, I don't know. Edge is community leader. He's cool. I guess I am. So yeah, for those of you who might not know all of us, we put some bios up here. Uh, so you learn a little bit more about us and then we go on with our nonsense. So, um. There you go, you got my bio, and now we have Wrench. Very big event organizer. So much stuff there to talk about for you. He's got, he's building up his <laughs> infinity stones of Tetris tournament organizing. It's true, it's true. I'm only missing a couple. Just a few. But uh, yeah, and then we have Dai, content creator again. I said it before the show, but congratulations on a thousand Twitch followers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I didn't I think we'd be the biggest out of the three of us. Yeah. Woo! Not counting, not counting PK <laughs> or Team TSD, by the way. True. <laughs> oh, oh, all right, leaking content. But yeah, this episode we are talking about uh, Stacky Awards, um, our award show that uh, we put on with the collective of communities in December of last year. Um, namely, we're just gonna be talking about the process of how we produced it, um, as well as just like the voting process, how that worked, as well as the true popular vote results compared to who we actually selected because we had a council of people. It wasn't just taken from the popular vote. We had a council of people deciding the winners of each award just in case some things were not properly represented. Uh, and we'll talk more about that as we go on and look at these different categories. Um, but yeah, the process of producing a show was very interesting. It was definitely quite a large undertaking. This was put together in like a month, maybe. It was less than that. It was definitely less than that. It was like, like the initial concept was like a month and a half out, and then we didn't do anything until like three weeks. Yeah. Until yeah. Three weeks out, like we had we had the logo, and that's it. And mm -hmm. then Moose and I were like, okay, we're running this. Yeah. And then uh, we put it all together. Um, which by the way is a very cool show. I just want to thank everyone who came out and watched the stackies for watching the stackies. Um, offer was put into that, like all the video trailers, the skits, and all that, and. Uh, for those of you who didn't know, there's another one. There will be this will be a yearly event. We're gonna have a 2022 stackies, and we'll talk more about that later at the end of our show, in regards to what we're looking to do to improve the show, what we'll be keeping, and all of that stuff. Um, but yeah, I oh. think now that we just given a little bit of an introduction, we could potentially hop into some um, to talking a bit about our voting and how that worked. So we dropped a Google form, I believe a week out from the event. It was it was within that range of time. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, we got like nearly a thousand responses on that throughout the community, people coming in and voting. So yeah, thanks to everyone who voted on that. Um, the results were very interesting. And then we took those results. We were about maybe two or three days out from the event. We got a group of people. We decided the final winners for each award and we prepared all of the assets from what we already had. Um, so some of the real winners were chosen from the popular vote and the council, all of us who we had on agreed. Some of us disagreed and we went with a different option. Um, and you'll see more as we go through the results, we'll talk about um, what we remember from happening in the council and how all of these were decided and the logic behind them as well as like the flaws and the strengths of the system that we had before and how we can improve it but, yeah uh, shout outs I to uh we definitely listened to the popular vote i think a little too much and i mean we'll, mm -hmm. we'll see it going through some of the stuff but some of them you know on a per personally you know all i'm saying maybe maybe your own should have won one of these that's all I'm saying. Maybe, but um, yeah, as we go through them, you'll learn more about like each category and what we thought about it. But yeah, um, 
the council was definitely a little bit uh a little bit skewed in the favor of the popular vote and kind of the original intention of this council idea was to make sure that underrepresented categories could get more shown because like if you have something or someone from like the ppt scene they're not gonna get as many votes from the tetrio scene just by virtue of tetrio being such a much larger game and we have brought Dion here he's one of the larger content creators who live streamed a watch party of our event um so we're just gonna kind of like he's in here kind of like as a ge general public representation <laughs> the um, public representation you are oh, you are no. representing the people here for us okay yeah, uh, just you are get, the like, people your reaction <laughs> okay, okay. is like a, no a known figure in the tetrio and tetra streaming scene of like how this event worked and just like questions that you think that people might have that you have yourself um as well as just like maybe some feedback and all that stuff mm -hmm. but yeah um Without further ado, I think we might jump into it. We'll talk about our first category. So biggest our first fad? category, biggest fad. What do you what did you think of this one, guys? I think I think we had like a uh sort of like a discussion on what actually constitutes a fad. Mm -hmm. And in the end we agreed the Apple game was the only one that was properly a fad. <laughs> So yeah, and this so we, we it kind of won by like a virtue of actually fitting the category. Yeah, that that's how that one was decided, which I think was a little bit different for the rest of the other ones. It was like more vote based, but this one's based on the logic of like what's the dictionary definition of a fad and what fits. Um, though some people may argue that like different things on this list were more prevalent than apple game they stuck a lot longer i know some people were talking about chip english and how like that's still around that's been around for a longer amount of time it would um it'd probably be considered like a more plausible win for the category but maybe now we can see what the people thought about this one um and where all the votes went i mean yeah for me i think apple game for me uh I don't know. That one got that, that one like actually reached me. Jap English. I like watched like the clip like once, I think. But Apple Game ended up becoming like a whole channel in my Discord. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah. So but, what actually um, the popular vote win was Jap English, right? I think uh, it might have been. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, dude, I still think I still think dang. Sheesh, that's my dog got got shafted super hard. I would just say it. I, I don't I know, mean, like, like, again, I don't know if that's a fad, though. That's kind of just, like, a thing like, that people say now. Yeah, it is a thing. I guess it's, like, a fad of, like, a commonly used expression, but, like, also, it's kind of stuck now, and, like, <laughs> people use it. Um, but, yeah, I think, like, out of all these, it's, like, at least at this time, if you do want to go by, like, the dictionary definition of what a fad is, Apple Game probably is still, like, the, the best fit for that. But uh, Jeff English and Sheesh, I believe, were more, they're like everlasting more popular and they might have been more popular in their peak times. Um, but they, ne they neither of them truly died off. Like Apple Game, since it like died off, um, I've only seen like two people play it. Um, so it, it definitely fell. It, but, it, it fell off as fads do. Like the other ones are still kind of around. I mean, Gigawatt, the Gigawatt thing was like a week. <laughs> it, it, it was a week. I didn't even. I didn't even know it because of the impersonation Tetria clause. Oh, that's true. Actually, that can't <laughs> even exist anymore. I I didn't think about that. That literally can't happen anymore. And like the yeah, pandemic is just like it's just a thing that people say. Is it really a fad? I didn't know either of those <laughs> existed for the stackies. To be honest. <laughs> It's a sad day for die representative of the people. I know. <laughs> I should not be the representative of the people. <laughs> oh my god. But um, yeah, that was uh, that was fad of the year, which I believe was one of our opening categories when we started the show last year. Um, yeah, possibly we can move on to our next one. I forgot what was next. Miss Dropper of the Year. So Kazu won this one, um, which. I mean, if you if you've seen Kazi's play, they can really go off, but sometimes they just like just kind of have a, a a big failure in the middle of a round, and it will top them out. So like, interestingly in play, like they are a very large misdropper. All these people are known for some of their mid game stuff, and uh, <laughs> promo got a little bit BM with that caption over there. I think I think promo kind of gets a bad rap, you know. 
just just for that one bit i feel like he got a lot of he got a lot of flack for it and then he also let's look at the popular vote because i'm pretty sure that happened like yeah <laughs> one by a lot I more literally think that then. promo attracted more votes because I we put can't Z spin on the Google form. If I remember correctly. Also the clip, right? Yeah, the clip also I believe is quite popular. Um but yeah, I mean yeah, I th I feel like for the meme promo would have won, but if you're like looking at it objectively, Kazu is a big misdropper, but they do they do a lot with uh what they're handed. So I don't think either of them's a bad win for the category, given that misdropper of the year is like kind mm. of a meme category in itself. I don't think either of them are bad picks. I think OSW also got kind of shafted. Again, like, kind of by virtue of being a uh, big PPT head. Mm hmm Like, OSW, OSW just kind of gets shafted by the popular vote a lot of the time. Or, like, PPT players, which is, again, like, what the, the council's meant to do. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't know. I still think Kazu should have won in the end. Yeah, I think like, I think Kazu is also a big misdropper, but yeah. OSW yeah. is also kind of big misdropper. But Kazu mm -hmm. just like does it so much, and there are like a lot of clips of like recoveries and also death from that. So yeah, yeah I, I I I do still kind of agree with that choice. Um, that that's what uh, I would have still picked that if I was on the council at that time. Now it might be a bit different, but yeah. All right, maybe we move on from here unless there's anything else to say. Ooh, this one. Ooh. I'm not even on- I forgot that I am not on the list. <laughs> yeah, so, TO of the year, you have five solid picks for this one. I think, I think any of them ha could have, like, grounds to win, but there are obviously some that stick out. You have, you have Jed, the, the dual wielding Beyond the Stars in Team TSD, the, uh, the, both organizations had big years in 2021. Of course, you have Lovely Moose with Puzzle Kingdom, also had a big 2021. Uh, ben XT with uh, now modern Mino community has been like a big hub for a lot of uh, Tetria and like fast game tournament organization. And then of course Cap starring Underdogs Cup, which I still think might be like the most universally recognized tournament. Tetria Cup like might be up there now, but UC is just like so popular among like the casual heads. Mm -hmm. um, lots of people love enjoying that for like the entertainment value of it. And then of course Beast and Shen with... Uh, it's actually might be the oldest organization on this list. MMC is around for a while, but World I think Puzzle WPL League is like slightly older than MMC. Yeah, slightly. Um, a lot of people don't know this originally started as like a Midwest thing to get one LAN event started, and that's what the Discord started as. And then Shen expanded when COVID hit to run online stuff, and now it's wildly successful. You have two LANs coming up next weekend. Um, SoCal will be streaming um, on various twitch channels so many brackets and stuff going on there a uh, ppt swap was added to that so that'll be interesting to see what puyo heads are there um but uh yeah i wonder what the popular vote looks like for this because i think all of these guys could have gotten like sizable margins for i don't remember i don't actually remember the popular vote for this one like Surely at all. you see right yeah but probably um, yeah caboose good old yeah. Pie. you see <laughs> But like honestly, all the, all these guys have like great events. But this is where really, um, <clears throat> this is one of the examples where I think like the the council kind of stepped in and it, it did what it was functioned to do. It kind of like allowed more, um, it kind of allowed more like various takes to be implemented into the decision process. Whereas if we just went popular vote, um, Caboozle was a huge name in 2021. They probably would have won any category we placed them in um whereas mm -hmm. if you look at team tsd like you see you see is a good production but team tsd really was like bringing core tetrio competitive together holding like the most consistent open tetrio series that there's still been so far um grew to a huge height uh, also holding events for a tec and um at the end starting tetrio doubles was a very fun format so yeah that, this that. half of that is me by the way <laughs> 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 i yeah, think jet but, still um, deserves the dub though dual yeah, wielding communities is like super hard like no, i think i think at this point like single to might get out rivaled by like organization because now mm. staff is kind of diversifying and i know mm -hmm. at least in 2022 a lot of people are made up of teams like 
the only person who I could say like truly rides solo on the org front is like Shen and Cab, and the rest of them. I have, think like, Caboozle people. still gets like a fair bit of yeah. Cab, of Cab gets support, but like it's, you know, it is definitely Caboozle at the front. Yeah, it's definitely Caboozle front. Whereas like the the rest of these productions these days are by teams, where you at least have two significant people running each event. Mm -hmm. Um. So it'll be interesting to see how this category shapes if it kind of goes to like organization or tournament umbrella, if we still stick with individual people who we like associate orgs with. I'm very curious to see how that changes in the next year. And uh, community leader of the year. This is this is an interesting one. Um, Aha. <laughs> so we have Yet again, five people, some similar and carrying over from the last time. Renge now on this category. Um, I think uh, Community Leader and TO, like, they tend to have some amount of overlap. Like, yeah. Just, like, generally speaking. But there are there are mm -hmm. also some where, um, there's also some where there are just, like, individual outliers hopping in. Like, you know how Blink in this category? Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I think when we think of Modern Mino, it is more of, like, a community place than a tournament host um it's more like a a hub where events can happen and then then a place dedicated to tournaments yeah i get what yeah. you mean and but and then like you, you see also kind of it's like that community feel it's also a tournament place so there's definitely overlap but there are there are reasons why these could be considered communities like you have dread here with bts from what i see bts is just like a fairly active hanging out discord for the lifetime and iberian people mm -hmm. um to just like have their spot um and then, of course, we have uh, TMH here, which is just a great resource if you guys have not heard of it. <laughs> so um, I wonder I wonder what the votes line up with this are. This is probably another popular vote massacre this here. Is a, this is a, po yeah, a popular vote massacre, as it as it often is. Caboozle <laughs> pie victory. Uh, I actually, I think I remember what happened. Because the it was like pretty split on the council between Caboozle and myself. And yeah. then uh, Caboozle made an argument for himself, and I was super tired that night. So I was like, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I was also tired that night. It's also It was also just like, here's where we can talk a bit more about how the council worked. We originally invited about 10 to 12 people in from like our various partner orgs and like a couple of other outlying growing communities to join us. And then over time, we just uh, unintentionally started like adding more people to come in. And it became very hard. Um, we definitely like overestimated our capabilities with the council structure. Um, and it just led to like each individual person being harder to keep their voice in. And they were definitely more vocal people who just like had an easier time talking. Mm -hmm. um, next time yeah. around, that's something that we want to improve on. We we're, we're locking down the members of the council to specific communities and specific members of their leading teams um, to kind of give it a more fair approach where everyone on the council we know that they can be equally represented um but yeah right here there's just like i i remember there it was pretty split down the middle between uh cab and Renge. um of course caboose is like a big figurehead but the argument for Renge is like they're also a figurehead and they do a lot of infrastructural work to help oh. some growth happen and make I think the community it was the it was like caboozled is a lot more like like front heavy mm -hmm. and then i was like back end a lot more and yeah mm -hmm. i think it's is fair to vote for cab is fair to vote for me i think it's also fair to vote for like jed and ben xg for sure yeah so i'm i'm actually curious from dai's perspective when you were watching mm -hmm. this for the first time if you remember what what did you who do you think would like win this category just by looking at the options I personally voted for Reg. <laughs> oh, let's go! Let's go! Yeah. Man of the people! Man yeah. of the people! <laughs> <laughs> the people have spoken? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no, that's what I yeah. thought. But the thing is, the thing is, like, I think with ca like, Cab and Eddie category, I was like, this is gonna, this is gonna win. <laughs> yeah, Cab was just, like, such a big name in 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Like, it's just, that's just crazy. Like, there's so much growth for him in that year. Um, and it also like grew our overall community and we have like a lot more people here now who are reaching out to new people but yeah community leader um this this is going to probably look very interesting this year 
I this know year, I think that a lot more people. That I know, like I know for movie. certain, Taj will probably be on this list. Any Tetra Amateur Weekly fans, mm -hmm. Taj will definitely be on here. They have a very active Discord, very big community, um, and they'll probably make it on here. But also, like, I don't know if there are any other servers rising up. I just know that Taj has had like meteoric growth throughout Taz, this year. Taj gets a lot of growth by virtue of like running like eight events every day you know what i mean that's true but i mean but it's they, a good they vibe have the, it's a they good have vibe. the hustle mindset mm -hmm. and it creates consistent content for the community which is why it gets some i want to see i want to see azura on this list that's all i'm saying azura. <laughs> shout <laughs> outs you know <laughs> shout outs i think kaboos i think people who won in a giving category if we were do the category again i don't remember what our ruling on it is it might be that we're like we're like axing them <laughs> I don't know, maybe. Next year, I, I feel like, might I feel like it, yeah, we still have to like um, draw out like the nomination process, how we need to pick final members for each category. But I know that some names will say, especially those who are going to be very active this year, some will go. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I think with that, we have developer of the year. I think for 2021, this one was pretty easy. Ask coming in with the win. <laughs> uh, te again, it Tetrio feels a little from... bit, a little bit mean. <laughs> Yeah. Looking back to like uh, to make this a category and then include Osk in it. Yeah, I feel like it's so free I'm, for Osk. It's definitely a free Osk like, hub. <laughs> I it's feel like so it's just free. Uh, yeah, and I just <laughs> they took up seventy six. This is the widest margin of all of them. But I feel like um I feel like this year it might be a little bit different if uh we see like, We are not letting Osk be in this category again. <laughs> I think I don't I don't think that will happen this year. This is something that we talked about, and I don't think that us will be nominated again for this. Um, mm -hmm. Just to give more spotlight on the rest of the community mm -hmm. and like developer doesn't just mean game developer. Like we have Nuke here to develop like a lot of our tools for making Puzzle Kingdom tournaments. If you see like our versus screens and stuff, and like if you watch Square One Open, that uh, APM meter and Touch Effect connected, she coded the back end and front end for all of that. Um, when we gave designs and even gave input on the UI. It's really yeah. godsend for that. She also built Nuketris, if you've heard of it, and the, the two wide quizzes, if you learned some stuff from that. And uh, also did overlays for Garbo Gamble Cup, if you watched that tournament back in, was it 2020? That was 2020, yeah. Damn. Damn, that was, that was before my time. That was before my time. Well, and like the other three time, yeah. people here are like, Really, and yeah, Moose talking like about it. Moose and I have worked with her node CG. It is super easy to use and makes like running tournaments and updating the overlays so easy. So it is really godsend if you want to run like production like this mm -hmm. to get someone to make a CMS like that for you. And then mm -hmm. Ice Dynamics as well, I know makes the underdogs cup life very easy. Um for all of them. Just like handling the like rank checking and stuff, automating a lot of processes for that team and especially with people who aren't as tournament experienced entering their events, that is also something that cannot be overlooked. Um, and yeah, then of making, course- yeah. uh, Making the experience easy for, especially rank cap tournaments, I feel, mm -hmm. is like, if, you're, if your registration process is too hard, that's, that's, it's rough. But yeah, I do also want to give an honorable mention to some of these like basic tools that we've used recently. GRAR made some mm -hmm. pretty cool mm -hmm. tools to also help that process. So if they make more stuff, I'd hope to see them on here this year. They made tournament registration bots, battle fight seating stuff. They've even collaborated with Nuke on some of these tools. Um, and they've just been a cool person. Yeah, Jira does a ton of stuff for Team TSG, especially. And, and basically anytime I ever have a problem with like seating or or running something, my first instinct is message Jira, please help. Yeah, Jira is so cool to talk to. <laughs> He's well. super and cool. Then, and then of course you have the AI developers to so the two most popular AI, Zetris, Cold mm. Clear. Uh, lots of PPT content made on these bots, very entertaining. Tons of viral videos created from these uh, from these pieces of code. So yeah. also shout outs to them. But all these developers are honestly phenomenal with their projects and what they've done. It's just like mm -hmm. Tetrio is a big game of the year. Next year this category is going to be very interesting, I think. Especially if we see more devs come out and create content. I think we should. We could definitely see more than five uh, dev like nominees for this category mm -hmm. this year, just like based on what I'm, I'm yeah. hearing about in like my neck of the woods too. It's just like mm -hmm. there are a lot of people that are that are working on stuff. Yeah, 
and uh, I think that wraps Dev of the Year for us. And we, oh. we have these interludes, so you guys uh, joined <laughs> our Puzzle Kingdom Discord, exclamation mark Discord, um, and asked us questions. So we're going to be answering them. I know Dai also took questions in his Discord shots if you're from there. Um, hey, yo. So from Andrew, our hard drive wiki writer, uh, how many Uwus will be in Stacky's 2022? What do you guys? What do you guys think? Any are we? Are we like? Are we like betting on the on the over, on the over we, we under? Can't, on how we many? can't know for certain, so we have to bet an amount. And we can come back to it and oh talk my. about it in another podcast. And like next next months. year, Talking Pieces comes back from the grave. You'll, we talk Why are you implying that this again. will not? This is well, not a good omen. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> the pilot episode. Talking Pieces episode fifty three. Okay, we come back hmm. and uh, we count up the amount of uwus in the stack. I'm gonna say, I'm seeing a lot of infinity signs. I don't know about this one. It, it'll <laughs> entirely depend on who we have as like the announcers. Yeah, we don't know that. Oh, before. that's true. It will entirely depend on who we bring on. If we bring on <laughs> someone who's like kind of in that camp, then probably many. Uh, <laughs> if or if uwu is in someone's name or award thing that they're nominated for uh, so maybe you at fan. home make a production with uwu in the title and force our announcers to use it and your bet might be right um, that is true <laughs> tournament of the year just becomes like uwu tournament uwu now we have a, uh, another question <laughs> oh wonderful amy for the next stackies what would you guys think of adding award categories limited to certain game types it felt like some games were dominant in the first stackies <laughs> So this could be a way to give <laughs> other games their own spotlight. This is good. This is a good suggestion, actually. I this like is actually it. a good suggestion. I was thinking about this because as we talked about in like, especially when OSW is featured in the award, um, mm -hmm. PPT players and I think also TEC players would get underrepresented just by virtue of the games not being as popular and well known. So kind of having categories maybe limited for those specific games and to be fair there'd probably be tetris specific categories too or any yeah. future games that may come out but just games specific to like their features like zone attack stuff for with ppt it could just be plays that are more common in that freshest game. zone yeah freshest zone of the year <laughs> what do you guys think um or just that stuff uh, and also die as like the public representative here. I want I want your opinion on this. Do you think that those things would be cool? What do you? Yeah, think? I think that would definitely be sick. And like uh, what Cab said with a uh, player of the year split by game, that would be pretty good. I think too, mm -hmm. if we could just kind of get more categories in. <clears throat> you yeah, play I mostly agree with, like, that. mostly Tetrio, right? Die. Yeah, I literally use Jastris just for cheese race. <laughs> You, you gotta you gotta get on this on this uh, PPT TEC grind. Yo, I mean, I tried on, TEC at the beginning, and it's just I don't know. I don't it's, know. It is, it is a fun game to get into, especially when you get like more game experience. Zone's fun. <laughs> stuff like like game specific categories are also good for kind of like diversifying the the audience. You, like you expose yeah. people to just like more content from more games. Like I think there are a lot of people who like. They'll only play Tetris or they'll only play TEC and they will like I kind know. of ignore content or tournaments that are for not that game and just like kind of like forcing them to look at stuff. I think that that's like an overall benefit. Yeah. Um, Stuff like because that. like there there's a lot of good TEC PPT content that Tetris players aren't exposed to. PBT players mm -hmm. aren't exposed to a lot of good mm -hmm. Tetris TEC content, you know, you know the works. Um so I think as a whole working to like diversify our entire audience into kind of like accepting more of these stacker games would be very nice because all of them have their own unique traits that make them all interesting to watch in their own way and everyone mm -hmm. from all walks of tetris games can enjoy at least watching and casually playing these titles so i think that's a goal that we'd have in the next one but uh let's see yeah. what is next for us let's see all right from flood uh VTuber how much time oh vtuber enthusiast let's go <laughs> how much time and effort goes into each skit how willing have you been to throw resources at them and how do you arrange for getting people into doing skits Ah, <sighs> uh, which what skits ran at stack because we've had what skits from memory it we've was had four content events right like, like content 
events with skits in them. Five? <clears throat> Four or five? Dude, this uh, was insane. It was <laughs> the techies, the and the, the three ranges. Yeah, in chronological <laughs> order. It's three like range. it's like Ren birthday bash one, R like range revolution, stack awards, RBB two, right? Yeah, I think that that. Shout checks. out to me for, <laughs> for <laughs> really pioneering the, the skit meta. <laughs> but yeah, um, uh, uh, so for, so as for how we get these skits, we just content we we content we contact people in the community. Who we think have good personalities, also has skills and made content before. But it's just a volunteer effort. They they go mm. in if they want to make a skit, they get a team together, or they do it by themselves. Um, they write a script, they shoot their video, um, and that's uh, that's that. So we had we had five skits. We had Rengemus, we had Dominic's Woke, we had um, or Onions um, Shield Why, Chan bit pie's oh, very shit. funny video and the <laughs> character system trailer um oh right you know i have an insane story about this skit thing i was invited to do a skit two days i think before the stackies and i was in vegas <laughs> so you, should have just, like... you should have just done a vlog from vegas that's Dude. the whole the no, whole skit is just you walking into the m m store i'm telling you one of the <laughs> have you seen those like memes where this guy's like in front of an electrical pole and he's like man i love being in paris <laughs> <laughs> you could have done one of those but with like the fake eiffel tower so it would have looked somewhat <laughs> believable and they just like oh. show off something else that's completely ridiculous that would have been oh good oh my god i think that would have been a great bit I think, uh, like, in terms of, like, Dai, you, you just said it, right? Like, mm -hmm. the you got an, an ask to make a skit two days out. I'm pretty sure every single one of these skits was finished with, yeah, like, these are also less put than together 24 hours to spare. Insane time frame. Dude, I'd be, like, I don't know, editing on the plane when, on my phone or something. <laughs> that would have been entirely... I think Dom edits his skits on his phone. He does. Dang. He does do that. I so think that would have um, been very possible. <clears throat> the 12 days of Rangemus skit, the, the one that I headed with, uh, it was at me, Comet Popcorn, Jed, and Alcazar, who who were like kind of the, the team behind it. That turnaround time was like 18, and then Diode did the video. I had, I was like, okay, Jed, you gotta, you gotta record these. And this is like 20, like 18 hours out. Jed records it, sends it to Alex, Comet Popcorn. Co he mixes it. In like three hours, I send it to Diode the morning of the Stacky Awards. <laughs> he made that in the morning of. He oh made that God. in a morning, oh like God. 8 a.m. up up into his house, making a really crunchy music video. And then we and, and the it reason why the time frame is off, I don't know if we originally were going to have skits or at least as many skits as mm -hmm. we had. Mm -hmm. I think some people just like know we were going to have skits. They wanted an opportunity, and then we contacted people. Yeah, we I like think... contract extra. The, I think the character system bit was always planned. If I remember, that, that correctly. one was definitely one of the originally planned ones. But all the other ones were just like, like spur of the moment. Like, hey, mm -hmm. I want to do a skit, or like we, I'd like message Dom and like, hey, do you want to do something? And he was like, yeah, hell yeah. Honestly, Surely like... next year we do at least a week, right? Well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like Surely. the thing about skits is like. <laughs> the there's no real like like time frame where you have to start it by yeah or, like you like you don't start it when someone asks you you can just you can just work on it on your own time that's what i'm kind of doing mm -hmm. i mm -hmm. have i have this little project that i want to do through the summer for the next Aki awards uh i think it's gonna be fun but like honestly the reason that that we're all like grambling at the end is because we're all lazy <laughs> we're all like lazy <laughs> as shit and all of like okay, me and Jed, we work together a lot on, on skits and and skit ideas. All of our best ideas come from like two a.m. VCs. Or, or it'll be like it'll be like midnight for me and like three a.m. for Jed, and we're like honked out of our minds. And I'm I'm just writing down <laughs> everything that we say, and then I turn it into a skit. Yeah, something like that. And it's just like those planning sessions, man. That's the kind of energy that we need in in our dumb skit making. Oh yeah, absolutely. But uh, next time we'll probably give like a bigger window. 
as as Ren said, he's like playing stuff mm-hmm. over the summer. It's just like a thing where like if you're interested, you want to be in one of these, you can reach out and we definitely take the the project. Um, yeah, I mean, like a good idea. We have we have more con more and more con events happening. I mean, mm-hmm. like I I say that I pioneered the the content meta, but it honestly it only really happens at events that like I'm a, I'm a big part of. So yeah. you know what? If people want to be a part of it, I'm down. Someone should record. Someone should record something at WPL. I, I am gonna leave one of my plans. Or, I did want to IRL stream like thirty minutes of like me doing planned nonsense at the Columbus event. That'd be fun. You ever seen like those like joke interviews? That would be super funny. If I, I went to, I, a I, win, I also, that would be I also did, I also did think <laughs> about doing those because I could get like a mic pack for this microphone. I could just walk around and record people. <laughs> Dude, that's, I think it would be really fun. Just run up to someone and then just immediately ask them some random question. What do you Hold think? Hold on, I've got to... I've got to dip for a second. <laughs> oh, he's dead. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Edge walks up, walks up to, to the person who just came into his room. What do you think of the catch your character update? <laughs> that's it. Oh, sheesh. Oh, we do my have ghost another question. Ah, you want to read this one? <laughs> sure, we'll hashtag Stacky's Fit return in 2022. From <clears throat> Fires BZ, this is a definite yes, and I think uh, hashtag Stacky's fit. What was last year a a very like uh like it was it was the bit was devised in one minute, and then <laughs> the next minute I had put on a suit and posted on Twitter. <laughs> oh yeah, this, and, oh, uh, you guys are talking about Stacky. Yeah, Stacky's fit. Stacky's fit. It was a, it was a Same. Alcazar, Alcazar and myself. Oh, mostly Alcazar, who who like started the bit, and then uh, a bunch of people just like got on the train. I think this is <laughs> a thing that I would like to make into like a core part of the stack. It's just like oh yeah, it was it was a it. great part of it. Mm-hmm. Fun fact: I I'm I'm wearing like a similar outfit to what I was wearing, which is not actually intentional. I forgot that we had this today until like I got <laughs> home. <laughs> dude i got i got my uh i got my suit altered or like one of my suits altered to fit me better i'm definitely i'm definitely like uh, showing up yeah. Ooh, dressed to the nine all right now i got a question from dies discord asking if the stackies was so good where's stackies to <laughs> december this year we already talked about it there's another one it's we're crazy doing, we're doing it again for the we're people do- again dang <laughs> crazy <laughs> crazy how we're doing it again what if, after the what if, was successful. what if us doing it again is just a rerun of the last show <laughs> Ooh, pre-recorded Ooh. It's a pre-recorded stream <laughs> Pre- pre-recorded stream never a bad thing oh a little bit of a production oopsies on this one this is not right <laughs> it's not as not our uh so it's true without this um just pretend that the correct image is there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. From Beth. Are there secrets behind? Are there secret behind the scene deals and bribes that rig the results? Just like the real life. Uh, the only thing rigged um, was the popular vote from people being popular and it being a vote, um, and yeah. council from people wanting to exactly follow the popular vote. <laughs> no, no bribes were were accepted this time. No. But you know, DMs are open. Of course. <clears throat> good very good very good there's also sometimes like a slight conflict of interest (laughs) Mm -hmm. in terms of people on the council and people yes on the voting panel but that's fine but yeah usually it balances out from the others speaking of cool things happening sakura blend very cool event had by us at pk um you have two fighting games two puzzle games if you're a skullgirls fan guilty gear fan of course all of you guys are tetrio fans you might play puyo um Come hop in, sakurablend.moe, um, to sign up for this wonderful tournament. And uh, you can get more info as well in our Discord. Um, so be sure to sign up for this happening the weekend of June 11th and 12th. I'll tell you, Tetri is on that first day in the 7 p.m. time slot. Um, uh, one so fighting game, EDP, one puzzle right? game each day. Yeah, 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight. Yeah, maybe I'll play that. Oh, sheesh. I forgot that <laughs> we were advertising my thing, too. Uh, oh, over I... under two Tetrio doubles tournament is uh, this weekend. This weekend, May 28th at uh, 6 p.m. Wait, did we get it wrong on the poster? It's, it's supposed to be PDT. 
It's supposed to be 3 p.m. PDT, which is I've, I've definitely made this error. Okay, don't don't be late by an hour. Oh, sheesh. That's okay. <laughs> Nobody reads the poster anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Uh, yeah. Pair up if you are U rank or under with somebody who is SS rank or, or under. Uh, this is like a relay sort of tournament. I don't know if any of you guys have done uh, a like what's what's a like a like a four by hundred like a four by one hundred, you know, like when when you run. I know that's a foreign concept to many of you. <laughs> like a relay <laughs> race. Wait, run? Yeah, like what? a relay what's race. It? Uh, but yeah, it's it should be really fun. I'm I changed the rules a lot from last time, so uh, if you end up joining, please uh please read the rules. You should honestly always read the rules to the tournaments you join. Sometimes I'll have a rank cap. And then uh, in the rules, I'll say I'm not enforcing the rank cap at all. And then nobody listens except the staff member that I told about that. <laughs> that was my April Fool's joke. That's great. But this time we are enforcing the rules. The rules. So, uh, yes, please join. Please join. Yes, please, please join. And very, very hype announcement. If you liked our t-shirts and our merch before, this is definitely one of the coolest things that we dropped. We have a... Uh, puzzle kingdom jersey coming out this is a very cool design um can't wait until i get my hands on one of these it'll be releasing soon Dang. coming to a metrino store most likely near you so keep your eyes out for the pk jersey um so it would be pretty good if you guys have um bought the shirts it can be from the same vendor so if you enjoy the comfort of those this could be as comfortable um mm -hmm. and uh, it's been designed over the past few days and weeks uh we've been conceptualizing this so be sure to pick one of these up when you see them we'll definitely advertise them more when these are actually out but just put it in your head super cool design for this jersey um and hopefully we see it on some lovely people dude i hope somebody shows up to the land sponsored by pk <laughs> you know they show up they're rocking the jersey they win the tournament Caboose yo <laughs> that's all i'm saying uh, if only maybe one day Oh, signed PK jersey? That's actually hot. That's super hot. I would How do you I would they sign that. PK jersey? You Yo. pay like $500. I'll give you my signature. <laughs> <laughs> uh, signed by signed by Edge? Signed by Mo Signed by all everyone in the community? Everybody. The t-shirt just becomes like a collection of scribbles. Yes. <laughs> Wait, it's actually releasing message from the chat from a uh, Moosey Moose Says, Why don't they uh, it'll release tomorrow, tomorrow? Dang. Oh, sheesh. Let's go. But yeah, uh, banger, banger product right here. Another banger merch from the big old kingdom. All right. What's next? We're back Ooh, to graphic this. Graphic is a banner of the year. Ooh, back, yeah, back to uh, the actual content of the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> so this one was very interesting because uh internally this is more of like a graphic designer and art category um mm -hmm. but i think next year one of the things that i'd like to see is but this is something that we did talk about is splitting graphic design and art up because there mm -hmm. are there are more people actively making art now in the community um but for yeah sure. so we had five Great graphic designers nominated for this. Glitchy, of course, probably the one of the most well known from this. Um got funds raised from I believe it was Renjavo. Yeah, Renvolution um, was a glitchy fundraiser. I love Glitchy. He makes the he makes most of the assets for Team TSD. He made the hard drop logo. He's done some stuff for PK too, right? He made the yeah. the current PK logo, I think. Oh sick. Is the current PK logo glitchy? I don't think so. The, the, the PK the animations are glitchy. Yeah, the yeah, logo. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, mm. the animations. Glitchy's a great animator, too. Yeah, Glitchy has, like, a bunch of aces. Um, and then you have Zynix, um, known for creating IFT, UC, and Tetralympic graphics. Um, and next up, you have Nitro. This is uh, this is my secret plug. Like Glitchy is Team TSD's secret plug made a lot of uh, puzzle kingdom posters um over the past like 10 or so months they've done a lot of work they're also my personal graphics guy um they made logos and stuff for me um and they also done graphic work for wumbo 
Uh, any tizers. Any tizers. <laughs> uh, true. But yeah, very, very talented artist and graphic designer then. You have David Scan for Comet Open, uh, working with VTT for all their stuff. Also, is a super talented guy. Lots of elbow grease in their work. Mm -hmm. uh, they make great looking stuff. And then you have Poca Dialga, known for some very cool art around the community, especially now. Their YouTube channel's been blowing up over the past few months. And they also made all of our super lobby badges for Tetrio Journey. Um, so let's see what the analytics were like on this vote. Pokedioka got the I didn't oh. actually remember this at all. I forgot that Glitchy got like super shafted in the in the popular vote. Honestly, like I feel like I, I feel like every I feel like everyone who did not get in the 30 got shafted. So they all do great mm -hmm. weird. Mm -hmm. Dang, like, the council they're, they're just definitely like there definitely need to be more representation <clears throat> for our graphic designers. I think um, it's part of it is the Pokedioka. I think the the popular vote is definitely like obviously it is but it's like mm -hmm. kind of uh biased towards people who are in the Just eyes like of more the well known. yeah because mm. glitchy does a lot of stuff that's like behind the scenes like nobody really knows that nobody really internalizes that glitchy does as much as he does one, nobody... one thing that i suggested actually mm -hmm. for this um was like instead yeah. of instead of showing like the names of the people we'd show work that they made Ooh, that wouldn't necessarily yeah. be publicly attributed to them and they'd pick their favorite design out of like a logo or a poster that all of them had made mm -hmm. that's a good idea I think. like favorite work favorite like artwork mm -hmm. or favorite graphic design yeah graphic design of the year and then afterwards you like you're obviously actually in this can't khakis. be done for like this can't be done for all the categories but for something like this i feel like mm -hmm. when it can be done it should be instituted because mm -hmm. like the council can do the work for the rest right because like this is a very subjective thing, so community vote would play a lot into it, um, mm -hmm. and it wouldn't be as much as of like a council objectively decides the thing because this is a very subjective category. So yeah. I feel like kind of anonymizing the vote to where one name would necessarily get prioritized just by virtue of them being known would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, a good suggestion from Quick and Chat saying that multiple designs from the person can be shown. So you can like show a logo, a piece of art, and like a poster that they've made. Yeah. And you can just like yeah, compile sure. it all together. So that's an idea that might be explored. It's something that popped into my head. It's like a little bit of a the, mini portfolio. Like Amy yeah, said. the art, the art categories, I think, are probably where we'll like internally change the most. Uh, mm -hmm. it within like a category. Like maybe, uh, yeah, we're probably gonna split. <laughs> category we're gonna do some other stuff too yeah we're waiting oh, yeah. we're waiting on some more projects from more graphic design. i think there are more cropping up over time yeah. which is i think it, there are a few a like thing. working in taws and stuff mm -hmm. um, yeah but so yeah. moving on from here we got oh commentator duo of the oh, year this is a I, very interesting one mm -hmm. it's hard to find okay one thing that i will say on this commentator duo of the year i think it's kind of a kind of a sham that modest and jed were paired together and uh sign and myself at no point could have because modest and jed were together neither of us could have been paired with modest or jed because there are a lot of times where it's just kind of like two out of the four of us mm. in some kind of hodgepodge combination. And I feel like any duo out of the four of us makes for some pretty good ones. Yeah, I think this year, like there will also be more commentators rising up. This will be an, mm -hmm. this will be an interesting category. This is definitely gonna be like a really hard one I to say. I don't remember how the popular went for this. Like my mind just like instinctually is going do tag dom. Tag dom, like, I think very popular second. at the time. But I don't recall. I knew that they were up there. Mm -hmm. I yeah, think there are like also... more pairs that like Moose have mentioned, like Red and I start commentating. 40.1% serious? Damn! Real? <laughs> That's actually pretty <laughs> That's crazy, sweet. I'm not gonna lie. And uh -uh. then uh Blarg Jen in second. I think mm. Blarg and Jen have commentated less recently, if only because Blarg has actually started playing again. Right. I think that the tag dom rep is low because simply they mainly commentate like PBT. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They didn't do. They very commentate much a lot either. of PBT. Um, 
Yeah. I think um I think next year it's this is a weird category to 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 make nominations for because oh yeah. You can't I think it's weird. Maybe it's not weird. To me it's a little bit strange because uh I think one person's name should only pop up should only come up once. Commentary do lots of good picks for this year. Um, mm. lots of good commentary duos rising um i'm excited to see it mm -hmm. but i think we talked a lot about this already maybe we move on i don't know that's maybe what we said journalist, journalist of, of the year, year. This, this one feels like kind of a easy win for ben xt and and uh the mmc newsletter yeah though i think over time this will become this will become mm. like more diverse if we get more people writing those you didn't hear, um, Ben is stepping down from writing um, MMC News in about 10 weeks. Um, it's kind of sad because it's a very good resource, but I think someone is slated to potentially take over for writing it. So it will not be going anywhere. And Ooh. Ben will still be uh, yeah. editing and formatting. But someone else will be behind the writing. And um, this is a very interesting category. Um, just by how it's formatted like you have george who's writing articles you have Ben who's like posting a newsletter you have jed on here for a spreadsheet um you have ors on here for uh around the block honestly it should be a dual nomination that's okay it's like you both put no nah, ors the did book. the youtube content too though yeah and the youtube which content and then jane getting nominated with their twitter threads which i think were like kind of satirical based but they did actually tell a lot about the history of the community and stuff um mm -hmm. so yeah i think all, all these guys are good picks but of course mnc news is so widespread um it's in 50 60 sir it's almost in 60 servers now it's in like 55 i think Dang, at one crazy. point ben sent me the analytics for it there are so many individual members who see mmc news it's like in the factor of like it's is it around twenty thousand members it reaches Holy. something like that does it count people who are in multiple servers as multiple people because i'm like i'm like 50 you, i'm discord <laughs> <laughs> dude i i read M I read the mmc newsletter like four times every week because i need to get rid of the the pink <laughs> notification i need to get rid of the notification and i end up reading it again and again uh, there's a, there's uh, a good thing. that's how it gets me yeah <laughs> honestly that's how, I just I just do enjoy reading about it. it. Does actually catch me up on what happens because mm -hmm. I'm a little bit disconnected. But dang, I need to be. And now this is this is gonna be one that's gonna change. The last one's gonna be one that's gonna change. Guides of the year, um, twenty five by twenty five winning with both of their guides. I don't remember why this happened. I don't know why we didn't pick one guide. Did you add them together for the I vote? think we added them together Surely, in the right. <laughs> yeah, in the in the counting it up. I. This is this is strange. You know, Pi won twice as many awards as most people. <laughs> <laughs> that is interesting. But yeah, we picked um we picked Pi's things on virtue that like they were the most like useful to a beginner coming in out of what was nominated. Mm -hmm. But now Ors hmm. has made many more guides this year, planning to make more guides this year. Um, we have. Tag, I think it's in the process of writing a guide, PPT focused, yeah. which would be very interesting. Um, there, are, I think, uh, I don't remember who it is, but there are people translating some of the ORS guides into Spanish. That's Ooh. that's a cool project, which is a uh, which is honestly lovely. Like I love that that Latom is like going out of their way to. Yeah. to do extra work and bring stuff I also, into... I also want to bring up a cool project from Jed which is like kind of unrelated but Jed mm -hmm. if you guys don't know there was a, a tournament called Taiwan Tetri Tournament 4 that was held in April of last year and Jed um, is redubbing the entire tournament with English commentary and is going to be uploading it soon to the Team TSD channels because Team TSD had a play in mm -hmm. staffing it so now there's going to be like a new viewing experience for people because I remember seeing some parts of that tournament. The design was great in it. Uh, the the matches were very cool to watch. Um, but now they're going to have new commentary for some uh, from some known personalities in the scene. Mm -hmm. um, so I cannot I cannot wait to see that come out. Um, it should be dropping soon on Team TST YouTube. Um, I think they did do the recording for it. 
already. Yeah, I heard because Jed contacted me to make a thumbnail template for it. Oh, let's go. Hey, <laughs> Good old Jed. Good old Jed. <laughs> go. Good old Jed. Dude, you're like our plug for for like little art things. It's great. We have a Twitch clip of the year up next. I think uh, Moose again trying to uh, insert himself into the category. <laughs> I see Kavuzel Pie Japanglish here yet again. <laughs> I just gotta say, all the all these all these clips were great. All right, these were all mm. funny clips. Um, Monkey Tom, of course, a team a team TSD content classic, you could say. On um, Japanglish is, I think, is it still Kavuzel? It's like one of his most viewed clips. Someone also bought a domain that redirects directly to this video. <laughs> Is it the Japanglish.com? Shendrag fan, of course, let's go. Was PK's let's, most popular yeah. clip for a while, might still be. 25 by 25 <laughs> doing the horse opener against Wumbo is hilarious in person. And then yeah. uh, go down with something that uh, the community had a fun time with. But let's see the vote. Oh, um, production. Oh, Look at that. oh. So Smexy it has a go down. down. Um, has mm -hmm. what have won the category. Um, should, should we talk about how this happened here? How this came to be? Because normally it's been like agreed or close to agreed mm -hmm. the popular vote. Um, but there is a reason why this happened. Um, I'm not trying to, this shouldn't be too bad to talk about. Basically the creator, the creator of the clip is not actually very fond of the go down clip. Um, yeah. So we yeah, figured yeah. that highlighting it in front of like 400 live people and then later thousands of people on VOD um, would not be the best idea. So we decided to pick another one of the four entertaining clips to highlight um, just out of respect for the streamer. Mm. Uh, and they do still mm. consistently create content for Tetris. Um, it's it's hard to uh, to not at least like give it a mention in terms of like a nomination. But I think yeah. Uh, like yeah to be respectful of how they feel about the clip it definitely mm -hmm. makes sense to not have it win even if it did win the popular vote yeah, i think a so lot of people have for. adopted go down like as like as just like a mantra which i think is interesting if not a little bit eh. yeah but it is what it is right mm -hmm. and then uh yeah we just picked of like the what a lot of people like elsewhere received we kind of looked objectively outside the votes. We saw that a lot of people mm -hmm. were talking about and enjoyed the the clip of Jen's commentary, which is why it was picked to win the award. Yeah, I I think like any of these have like the, like could have won, but uh, I yeah. think it makes sense that it was Jen. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, there's just a little bit into that decision. And next category mm -hmm. should be coming up. So we um. We have two winners for caster mm -hmm. of the year and we had double the amount of nominees just because there are so many good commentators now uh, it's gonna be even harder to narrow them down this, this is year. this is gonna be, yeah, this, is gonna be this, this category is gonna have like like 30 people in it it's just, i don't it's think it'll have 30 people to... i think it'll just be hard to narrow it down yeah, and yeah, yeah. we have to There's take a like... lot of time to narrow down this mm -hmm. nomination like a lot of people oh. are gonna get given nominations in terms but of yeah. just like people uh, I want them don't want to well, see them but yeah mm -hmm. we'll just go through all these commentators like you have sine wave dom range jed crackerino pants for hire gen drag fan ed tag here cab and modest all these guys very consistent commentators very good personalities fans really enjoyed their presence uh let's see the numbers behind them because this is gonna be very interesting so this is th there is like there are a lot of numbers to go down here this is obviously broken down um mm -hmm. sign is that is that the nice number 6.9 percent <laughs> to them and then uh, it's all split between like basically yeah. 10 or like 15 and whatever percent we're gonna full screen this um you got but caboozled yeah. of course in the popular vote on this one i think just by virtue of a lot of the common folk um kind of recognize caboozled the most because a lot of common <laughs> folk there um are tuning into you see casual viewers yeah. who came in from that promotion um the but... the caboozle factor is definitely i think it's the most apparent here 
Yes. Uh, compared to anything else, because like, I I don't know. It the 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 numbers the difference between like Caboozled and the second most voted first is definitely pretty significant. <laughs> yeah. Um. But we for so our reasons for our choices here um was sine wave we saw at the time and I think they still are one of if not the most consistent commentator. Um. <laughs> They show for so many events, they work well mm -hmm. with basically any person they pair with. They're a very dynamic commentator, They're, they have very good play-by-play -play analysis, um, which was shown in the highlight reel. I kind of wanted to highlight that when I was making those at the time for the stackies. I wanted to show how good Simway was at that kind of analysis. I was watching back through the stackies a bit to kind of see what I put in those reels and uh, how the reactions were. But mm -hmm. this, uh, I think that was very well deserved for Sign. This year, it could go to someone else, even though he's more consistent, because there are so many more consistent commentators being bred, and so many more are like out here. And we pick Crackerino because Crackerino is really like carrying the initiative to have Spanish restreams of our English tournaments. You will see that like every yeah. Tetrio Cup is live streamed in Spanish. Square one. Square One events are going to be restreamed in Spanish. I think maybe Crackerino, in future journeys uh, will be in Spanish. Yeah, Crackerino and Simshrimp like mm -hmm. always go out of their way to DM me whenever I announce a tournament. They're like, "Yo, give, uh, give me the, give me the stuff. We got you. Spanish restream coming in hot." And it's, it's always nice to have people who are like taking the initiative. And oh it, yeah. And it's not like us reaching out to them. It's like. They really, really want to do it. And they really want to grow uh, the Latam yeah. and the things. I and not like only that, really it's really like cool. our the Spanish the Spanish scene is like so so cool. Um, mm -hmm. And there are so many people there, and our English events are now going to be able to reach out to them. And I wonder if there's ever going to be a day where we're going to have the reverse happen, where we're going to English dub um, like a so Spanish, Latam a Spanish, tournament. Yeah, a Latam tournament. I think there will I, be a day where we'll have tournament. Uh, Tornado uh, Tetrio Latam. Tornado, yeah, Tetrio Latam. That's definitely something that I would like to like yeah, dub in English. English. That'd be really great. But uh, yeah, uh, next year there have been more Spanish commentators popping up. Mm. I think a category split will happen for that. Um, mm. If we see more pop up, because there are currently like four or five consistent faces I know that have been commentating. It's not just uh, Crackerino consistently or Crackerino Simshrimp. I know Jed's been kind of getting out commentating a bit more. Uh, you have Fakubot, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know yeah. how to pronounce the name. Never said it out loud. Um, <laughs> you have Sim Shrimp now. <laughs> to be honest, um, you now have Sim Shrimp commentating so much. Ryko too, and I think some other people have done it. I think sure. I think one day there will be place for Latin stackies. Mm -hmm. um, not right now, but I think some Latin categories should be honored in the event. For Just because sure. like their scene's growing and they're doing a great job. Yeah. Um, Who do you guys think so far is like? Uh, not on the list now that could be nominated for commentator of the year. Obvious I, I answer. Obvious name. answer is Azura Horizons. That, obvious answer is Azura. Answer. You can't. You can't answer Azura. But who else? Die who streaming, else? of course. Die streaming. <laughs> never, never reached out to me for commentary in his life. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Azura is also like a super mm -hmm. consistent commentator. Moose, I believe, has only commentated one toss. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's a i think i think it's like azura edge i think you're definitely uh coming up interesting. commentating more and more it's because there are more to's now or like they're yeah. we're, we're running more events and there are more events where either you're not stuck broadcasting or like i'm not stuck actually staffing and then we just kind of like have enough spare time between us to run a block yeah. together and yeah, the, those blocks are really fun. I've, I've enjoyed that. I've gotten more time mm -hmm. to commentate, especially on TEC. Um, but I like doing all the other games and stuff. Um, but yeah, there's some some pretty good things this year um, for commentary. I'm excited to see how this list is going to morph, especially with more commentators getting in here. Yeah. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Streamer of the S was a little bit... <laughs> was, is this the second biggest wash? It's, it's hard to say we'll, anything. We'll see in the numbers. The... Um, yeah. Jesus, <laughs> more than 50. Yeah, so the thing is, is like there, 
there wasn't there are now more there are more streamers mm -hmm. um that have the potential to be nominated for this um what was looked for is the consistency of the content creator um and potentially audience size um but yeah. we really took like the largest consistent people for this i know two of them are no longer consistent so those are free slots automatically i think the other three would have room to stay but we might want to get more inclusive into our community and i was just throwing i'm in yeah. there um i think so. uh one thing that we also might do is like up and coming streamer of the year as yeah, in that, somebody that, who yeah, doesn't already have like discussed. as established as an audience so streamers like promo streamers like yourself edge and and die mm. too and uh i don't know like i don't know who else is who else streams my brain <laughs> i don't know azura azura streams mm -hmm. so radical true. cup radical <laughs> cup yeah yeah there, there are there are many prospects for this award and the up and coming um but yeah also one unfortunate thing that happens is uh caboozle's decision is to go to japan so this leaves an opportunity for a void to be filled on the list and i'm i'm interested to see what, what happens in a like in a caboozle break period from this community mm -hmm. i haven't talked no about this oh um, <laughs> no it's gonna be very interesting to see where the people that cab brought in flock to for content mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and who they who's, watch who's gonna actually like take the promos probably gonna get like a 200 percent month and get partner is my prediction well, that's true <laughs> It's it's the it's the, the caboozled effect is you're funny you're interesting and you're really really good at the game, yes. And uh, whoever is funny, interesting, and really good at the game and sucks up the three p.m. to five p.m. time slot day in day out, that's that's like <laughs> time uh, to hit the grind. The time road the for grind. growth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, die. You gotta you gotta hit that one hundred sixty a.p.m. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know me. Yeah, I think yeah. I think another person who could get on here if they stream more is FS. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. FS has been streaming more and more lately. He streams. Yeah, I've room. noticed they stream in like the AM. Yeah, they stream which like I've really, really enjoyed early. watching in class. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just pop in lick every once in a while. Um, but yeah, the early morning slot is something that I think more people will take advantage of. The summers would be really interesting for content. Yeah. As we see mm -hmm. more people build up as Caboozle exits. Um, so this would be a very interesting time for the streams. But uh, yeah, this this is a, ooh, <laughs> this is an interesting category. The five people. Yo, who's this... that person on the right, dude? The person on the right is kind of... <laughs> But do you need another what pair of glasses? Say, bro? I thought, oh, who, sorry, there's I just, no, I there's no underscore. To... I don't know who this guy is. <laughs> yeah, messed up. So true. <laughs> this but, is a uh, random, yeah. bro. <laughs> so not. I guess we could like we could go through the philosophy of how these people got the nomination. Small mm -hmm. Fish was one of the most consistent and largest growing creators at the time. Ors was producing ATB and putting out lots of guides. Poca Dialgo was starting to rise at this point, making lots of funny videos. 25 Pi 25 was putting out good guide content. Um, mm -hmm. And Dai was putting out great skits um, and just was consistently at this time uploading some pretty good YouTube highlight content from their Twitch channel, which kind of attracted us to look at it. Uh, a lot of people have enjoyed that content from all these yeah. people. Um, and let's look at the popular vote here. This is the biggest non caboozle wash in the boat <laughs> non osk wash either non this is like non yeah. osk non caboozle non -osk wash. probably and the wash that i expected the least yeah of, myself of as well though i think small fish did promote this forum on youtube community mm -hmm. um, oh that tracks which would make sense why why this happened um mm -hmm. i will i will say something uh this was probably a, a council fault in my opinion was yeah this I is something of... that was heavily debated between our council and initially the very the very vocal people um were just insisting that we stick with the popular vote on this when um arguably like at this point poca dialga was rising and mm -hmm. this is just like my personal opinion i feel like um 
with especially what they've done now, especially taking time like during and after their service in like military to continue producing consistent content, they definitely deserve this award. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and I feel like this was... Um, this this one was probably the biggest blunder. I, think. Yeah, I definitely agree with you that Poco Dialga uh, had... Me, I don't know if I'm going to say like deserved it but i think poca dialga should have won and i also I just, think ors was think done that. really dirty by the popular vote yeah you know content creator of the year put me in there around the block yeah. if around the block is iCarly, i'm definitely sam <laughs> <laughs> i'm kind of, that's, that's so true but yeah uh small features is really consistent which allowed them to edge out even though poca poca dialga just Poké Dialga injects a lot of charm in the content, which is what mm-hmm. attracted me to mm-hmm. believing in them for this. Um, and that's just that's just my take on that. Um, but yeah, and they're they're still going right now. I think they even made a YouTube community post that they're that they're attempting to go full time on content and freelance art. Um, oh dang! So yeah, big Poké props Dialga to has them. Has a Patreon now. Yeah. So oh, go yeah. support them. They definitely, they definitely deserve the, uh, the the mm-hmm. full timer status. They put a lot of effort into their stuff. But uh, yeah, I think we can move mm-hmm. on to the next one. Moving on here. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Production wants a link to the Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> we have comeback of the year. I think uh, this is a hard one. This is a hard one. I think, uh, I don't actually remember what happened in Rivy Blarg, but Rivy Blarg will come up later. Oh, yeah. This was not my for like, uh, quite a few things. On the forum, um, do we have links to these? or? We... I think oh, we did. No. We, did? we did? Okay. I think it was to the Twitch VODs. Because <laughs> 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 we hadn't put up the, we hadn't put the VODs up on YouTube yet. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, like, oh, yeah, I think Vince versus Jason, Jason was like a crazy reverse sweep from whatever. Was that like 110 or something? Yeah, it was like one or two ten, and then it completely ran back. Oh um, my god, and then it was yeah. like it was a crazy set, just like the rest of these. Uh, the most recent one on here is the PC open, which I feel like is the least watch, but Firestorm mm-hmm. got knocked into losers in that tournament, and I think did one or two reverse sweeps either like in the reset or in grands or both, and won the entire tournament off of that. Yeah, so it was think... a very big sequence of events. So that's how that got nominated for those who didn't see PC Open and Range Evolution and Tetria Journey, kind of like household classics for this. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, Jason kind of getting hit with the sticks this time in this category i'm not gonna lie <laughs> jason got hit by two, two whole comebacks i think the blark jason comeback was like three was like one eight or something and then blark just like like turned on the gas Damn. and uh, yeah i oh, mean yeah. all of these comebacks are just like insane to watch because it feels almost like a, like a switch is turning in the brain mm-hmm but yeah, and uh, very good comeback to this. Uh, now, what were That's the crazy. popular vote on this? I would be surprised if Vince Jason didn't win the popular vote. Yeah. Oh my Ooh. god, that was a pretty big blowout. Lots of votes for the PC Open one though, which I didn't remember and wouldn't have expected because mm-hmm. the. But I guess it makes sense because the tournament was pretty well watched and the voting form came out about a week after it's just like a fresh sequence of events in voters minds mm-hmm. mm. so they would have thought about it um but that tetra journey match very rememberable and it was a huge reverse so also very good comeback for this year yeah um but yeah i'm a i'm make... a big fan of like just big comebacks i feel like they're yeah there is I mean, like high. one big comeback that happened this year i don't remember what it is but it was insane yeah <laughs> it was one of the tetra cups it's also one of the Tetra Cups. <laughs> the Tetra Cup is a it's super like the, the Blarg run from uh in in the first turn the first Tetra Cup of this year. Dude went down like four nine like th- in three separate sets and then just kept winning. <laughs> mm-hmm. But that's like a hard thing to quantify as one comeback. But yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, There's lots of things that could be nominated for uh these kind of like play like gameplay based awards. I think. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's let's run up this next category. 
Oh, I think we're further into the end here. The play of the year. Cool. There was play so of much year, low here. key, low key, huge blunder on my part. During the production of this, I sent Moose the wrong clip <laughs> for Blark. <laughs> And uh, I think that's why Varg didn't win. The The original Varg clip was, like, insane. But, yeah, it's okay. This is something talked about, but... First off, uh, Jimothy looping PCs versus Wumbo in a PPT tournament. That's kind of crazy. And then you have Dormy looping PCs versus Blink in, like, a mid-game zone battle. At, like, six or seven perfect clears in a row. Jesus. This one stuck out to mm. us when we were selecting. And Dormy, there is a lot of perfect clear stuff right here. Um, you have uh, cool. <laughs> you have the UDC Cup Bravo PC, um, and uh, then you have Vincent Dial pass through stalling each other in a Tetrio <laughs> Cup after they receive PC. That's that was yeah, that's the original like a clip Blard the clip. Uh, the original Blard clip was 300 APM for 30 seconds, but we couldn't find the clip for the life of us, so we had to change it. It was <laughs> no. really sad. It was like Blard did like a Gamu PC to DPC, and then you received. I don't know. It was crazy. It was. Yeah. Trust me. Trust me. <laughs> Play of the year this year is gonna be very interesting. We've already had so many <laughs> events so far. Mm -hmm. There are more planned. Um. But yeah. I think uh like. This year, play of the year is gonna definitely be a hard one to like narrow down the nominations for. I feel like there are already like at least like seven the, off mm -hmm. the top of my head. One of them is that Uya Shota thing. <laughs> oh, dude, that Uya Shota that that would definitely be my pick as well. I just <laughs> you can't not pick that one. It's but, hard. Uh, it, let's see the analytics on this. This is gonna mm -hmm. be interesting. <laughs> Really? So, yeah. Blark got the popular vote for this one? I think this was uh this is very evenly Didn't. split though between the mm -hmm. one the one Dormy, the one Vince, and the Blark. Um the the reason why we picked like the the Dormy clip is because it got a reasonable amount of the popular vote and it was like most objectively impressive from what it seemed. Uh the 300 APM for 36 probably would have won if we had like the source material. But based on what we were seeing and what we could go off of, um, this is what it was. Yeah, Blarg also argued against himself. He got into this <laughs> council. He, he got in and he was like, guys, this is not that impressive. Because we didn't find the right clip. It was really sad. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> it was um, extremely that Dormy sad. clip was also crazy. Um, so yeah, mm -hmm. very, very cool stuff. Hmm. Well, what do we have after play? This might be tournament of the year after this one. Actually, oh, biggest oh, upset, upset of the year. Ooh. This, this one, this one's definitely a deserved one, I think. And I yeah. don't remember if this was popular vote, but uh, Beechev. Beechev is crazy. Beechev if I had to imagine, trash. my prediction for a popular <laughs> vote, uh, Promo Dormy would be the popular vote for this. Mm, that's because true. That's true. That's a good Promo and Dormy. Mm -hmm. Actually. Okay. Oh, Hiroki versus Wombo got the pop had popular vote. I Dang. feel that's very interesting. What? Wait, no. Production's telling us that uh, it's wrong. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> okay, <laughs> the, the numbers are. That incorrect. one doesn't sound right. <laughs> hold on. I could, I could, I could open this and give a give a live report. Yeah, I think all of these are pretty crazy upsets. To, like being mainly a a tetrio a tetrioid as it were uh i'm obviously like the most familiar with the vchef upset which also happened mm -hmm. at like my tournament <laughs> uh the promo dormi upset which also happened at my tournament right. <laughs> i i have i have the results for it largest okay. was vchef okay. kazu wrench evolution um with 27.6 percent of the vote okay no, actually no I've, I had failed. That's second largest. Largest is Promo Dormy. Ah. Uh, with 31%. That's then close. after that was Sim Shrimp versus Tor uh, Togaya in a Torneo Velocidad. Um, and mm. then it was Hiroki Wombo and then Fox uh, Karisu. Um, so as I expected, uh, Promo Dormy edging out there. But now we have overall tournament set of the year yeah yeah <laughs> i think this Ruby, is still Ruby even still this is considered one of like the 
the craziest sets of all time. And I think in 2022, there are sets that have like art that are even more crazy. But Rivi Borg is just like it's that it's one of those sets that feels timeless. Like you can watch it back. And with the with the I think it was me, Modest, and Jed like triple commentating. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. That was the con. <laughs> mm-hmm. I feel like tournament sets tournament set of the year I, th- I think i talked about this with with someone at some point in the past it mm-hmm. tournament set is kind of made by the people who are casting it you mm-hmm. know in a way because like it's it's made by the people who are like super invested and they make they make the gameplay exciting because it just it's like a close set and people are playing crazy but it's it's the people that give it life you know i feel mm-hmm. like yeah that's why like Azura Horizons Artistic Hat is also here because that it's SS gameplay, but commentary wise, it's crazy. Yeah, also just like the the experience of being in the room for that one was mm-hmm. pretty crazy, just because like the circumstances. Um, and the you'll notice that a lot of the comeback sets made their way on here. Yeah, just because the experience, um, with all of this stuff, um. But yeah, this is the numbers on this one probably kind of reflect with the winner, if I remember correctly. I think so too. Uh, so we'll see. So. Yeah, thirty point three percent of the vote for uh, Rivia Blarg, twenty two point one for Vince Jason, a touch of your journey. Uh, then sixteen point eight percent Azura Horizons versus Artistic Hat, UC twelve. Uh, 14 point, oh, 16.1 for Firestorm Fortissum at PC Open, and uh, Dormy Promo Zone Masters Dawn was 14.7. So, so, so someone asked, most of these got between 600 and 700 responses. Mm-hmm. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about this. In large categories like t- uh, TO of the Year, Player of the Year, those got between 800 and 900. Um, so just just keep that in mind when you're when you're thinking about the percentages those are rough numbers it like varies slightly depending on the category and how many people are like invested um Mm -hmm. player of the year i think had 900 ish votes that was the largest that was definitely the largest one yeah i think this year's tournament tournament set of the year because it's so hard to pin down it's it's insanely hard to pin down what the, we think um, the tournament set of the year is right now. It's like there, I think the square one grand set has pretty good contention mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. it was like grands are the largest tournament of the year so far, um, and you had Uya Shoda who had like a three or four win streak on Kazu was actually up on Kazu. Chat was freaking out during that set. It was crazy. I remember commentating it. It was a very unique, um, very you unique. See, you see God bleed there. for a moment there, and yeah. then and then Kazu started winning again. Then Kazu like got a band aid and mm. patched himself up, and then ran it back. But Uyashoda was surviving so well in these rounds. Yeah, it's man, it's hard to say. There's like. <laughs> There's like Tetrio Cup, oh, Tetrio Cup I gotta, 7. I gotta has... say something here. The, Someone the, just said Tetrio okay. Cup 7 Tournament of the Year. All right, man. Tetrio Cup 7 has like, I don't know if I'd say Tournament of the Year material, but Tournament Set of the Year material. There are liter- There's literally like five sets in that tournament <laughs> that are Tournament Set of the Year material. Tetrio Cups have crazy sets, but so in terms far. production wise, it's like. So far, and I don't think it'll be beaten. Mm-hmm. Square One will probably be Tournament of the Year so far so far so far but my my personal prediction is i don't think it will be beaten this year that's just my personal opinion we'll see we'll see edge we'll see (laughs) man this last week last week before the stackies bren just christmas bash (laughs) goes all out (laughs) exclusively to prove you wrong (laughs) what what is it gonna be to be like a nine thousand dollar like you're playing World for, for three months tetra supporter <laughs> 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 oh, shit. 
All right, but let's move on from from tournament set. What's next? Flashiest Flashiest. player of the year. I don't actually know if I would say that it's Blart. I don't remember. This is kind of another popularity heavy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I uh, I'm a TEC head. I voted for T flat. I'll be honest. I think I might have voted for Blar too, actually. I'm relatively unsurprised. I feel like Blarg has a style that looks flashy, but it's not actually that flashy. Because it's like... It's like it's, it's very buffed pragmatic. by speed. It's buffed by speed, for sure. It does get it does get significant speed. Oh my god. Mm, Jesus. And there yeah. it is. And there yeah. it is. <laughs> Popular vote winner, Blarg. I think if I don't, if I'm not wrong, I think Blarg also voted against himself for this category. <laughs> I think he said, I think he was like, dude, it's definitely Flair. <laughs> yeah, Flair, Flair is also very, everyone on this list is very flashy. I think I just went at the point of like knowledge of the player mm-hmm. um, and knowledge of their flashiness. Um, that makes sense. You know, whereas you have like Ruby who's very popular in tournament, Flair is like a content creator, Blarg, it, both in the right. Um, and then Bowser and JB didn't really make as much content and didn't have as much tournament appearance on the wider scale. I think opinions might change on this, and we're, there will obviously be new players. Mm-hmm. Um, For sure. Who's a who's a new newish age flashy player of the year? Mm. There's an argument for like Kazu, but when Kazu feels like being flashy, you yeah. know, like when he does like the twenty five percent zone, and then it sends like sixty damage. Yeah, 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 yeah. That kind of stuff, I think, is like, it's definitely like a a flashy thing to do. But it is sick. It is sick. <laughs> yeah. Um. I think I think zone players would definitely be there. Okay. This content creator was kind of a highway robbery. This is the biggest highway robbery of the stack. <laughs> this is actually the biggest effect of popular vote on the entire event. I don't even want to talk about this. Just please show these numbers, because this is <laughs> this show is the where numbers, you break my the friend. Oh, oh, the caboozle went to the corner store. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not gonna yeah, lie. This, this is a this, this was is criminal. A dub. Okay. This is a Vchev dub ski or I a think, sim shrimp dub ski. I would say so at the time lie. Vchev, but then Vchev stopped playing an event, so it just became sim shrimp because they had more opportunity to perform. At least this mm. year, I'd see it. Like knowing what I know this year, I would have voted for simp. But at the time, I was in the Vchev camp. Garnsell was also performing very well, um, mm-hmm. but for cab and promo, like they were kind They're of already good because they were already like good or pro. Um, and I know that a significant amount of people in the council as well wanted to argue against this, um, but it yet again went back to like the three people arguing for popularity. Mm -hmm. It's also worth saying, worth noting that this category had a sort of like a weird, uh, like breakout player of the year is sort of a weird category to nominate people for because, uh, I think Caboozled pot, Caboozled especially, but Caboozled and Promo generally. They were already really good. They were already like, I think, a bunch of the tournaments, they were already placing like ninth, ninth, 13th ish, and then occasionally. I just think eight. our, um, I just think we didn't really notice a lot of like material, but I know this year for nomination, it would be easier to build a good breakout category. Yeah, for sure, mm-hmm. for sure. Lots of players With are getting really players. good lately. I feel so like this most would... improved or something, maybe. Yeah. Most improved would be interesting. We picked breakout over most improved. Most improved was the original idea. Mm-hmm. We picked breakout over most improved because most improved is hard to quantize, you know? It's hard to kind of put like a number four and like kind of scale people. Whereas mm-hmm. breakout, you kind of look for like relatively where they like a top 64 player and then start top eighting. That's a pretty big breakout achievement. Um, and that's kind of like what those three players on the left were achieving. They were like yeah. top 32 players at most. And then they achieved and they became a lot. They started placing very high in events uh, and pulling off upsets that shouldn't happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, 
that's just like the breakout thing this category mm -hmm. would be much better um managed yeah moving on from here though world record of the year i oh. think this is kind of a it's a hard one to not say reset but i also think we we missed we missed one really really important oh what, uh, which world, world record, record that was set and that's uh Raviklia, who i think had 10 line 18 line and 100 line cheese speed world record at Gosh. the same time and Ribby's cheese stuff would have would have been I don't know if it beats reset, but I think it's kind of a highway robbery that it wasn't nominated at least. That that was the the Rivy one. Yeah, but I, I still um, think reset is the. I know, I know, I know one thing. Um, mm -hmm. If Senred sub thirty PPT, it would have been world record of the year. He's very very close, but he did not get it. It was like point two off. And now Fushi Dean, I think, holds that record right now. It might have been beaten by another one of the Eastern players. Um, but yeah, um, Fushi Dean might get it. I think this year, if there's no big, like, legitimate 40 line barrier broken um, in Tetrio or um, on Gestress again, I was getting there. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I think if that if that would be it. If that doesn't happen, it's not like massive like what we thought. Mm -hmm. uh, then a PPT sub thirty would win this. Um, yeah, I think also if like uh, Blitz or there's the ult the ultra world record the the like the two hundred k break by Smallfish. That one's worth worth noting. For it's sure. also a big one. Um, uh, I think people are definitely also pushing like the the Tetrio Blitz world record a lot. Mm -hmm. uh if we might see like 1.6 1.7 even being broken by the end of the yeah. year you never know but my, my my pick for this in this year would be a sub 30 ppt this is mm -hmm. a very impressive barrier to break show me sub sub 25 ppt <laughs> you know what only tetris PPT. <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh my God. all right now tourney of the year so for this we have wpl championship uh 2021 in columbus obviously it got that like land boost big winner um but all these tournaments are honestly amazing mm -hmm. uh tornado tetria latam very underrated event i think compared to the rest of these yeah definitely because you think of like tetria journey Runge revolution uc charity those are kind of like household classics mm -hmm. um here um tornado tetra latam kind of underrepresented but there were so many players who came out for that it's like a 400 500 registrant event yeah there are a and lot of one people of the, the most viewed tournaments of all time yeah um a kind of like broken barrier there i think it was one of the first uh touch spence in modern time to get latam front page um mm -hmm. it's not something that we use very often uh, but wplc shen came out um managed to fit an event right in the sweet spot where ko is kind of going down and then the winter said shout outs and <laughs> stuff started getting bad again we had like one period in late summer this event was held um and i'm curious what the votes were because i know that it was kind of yeah. close and i think UC, uc charity definitely got the the caboozled buff it got the i think i think tetrio turn torneo tetrio latam got shafted by a significant margin Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I am, I am, ex I'm in a state of acceptance that Range Revolution is not, uh, not at the, <laughs> and not touch quite your, at the level. Your journey, <laughs> like mainly here, I think people remind us like setting new production standards for tournaments in this community, mm -hmm. with all the fancy nuke stuff that was in there, as well as just like great design from Moose, who I think is kind yeah. of like underrated designer. Um, they put together a lot of like pk overlay stuff on their own as far as design so shout out shout outs to moose for um mm -hmm. existing and, and using editing software and shout outs to all these events in general honestly of course like every every single one of these turn this is like the highlight of 2021 in terms of mm -hmm. like our scenes competitive like, like if you want, if you if you ever had the feeling to catch up on like old events, these would be the five I'd pick that you should watch. Mm -hmm. You should go back and see moments from at least. Um, 
but yeah the wplc this land seems to be interesting because there are more lands there's a lot tom land there um, was there are two there might be another one too here. Ooh. uh yeah i heard that they're trying out another lot tom land oh and there's yeah a and land... there's a singapore one too um, i don't know if that's announced which is why i avoided talking oh. about it <laughs> oh just kidding oh uh, <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we're we're back. And we're back. <laughs> oh no, e. Uh, uh, it's a, there's a hood failure. Um, <laughs> but shoutouts to Skyla. Uh, yeah. You're getting a little bit. Just keep your eyes out if you're in Singapore or can travel there. Uh, <laughs> you're nothing. <laughs> Bye, few years later. Ooh, this is the big one and our final thing to talk about in mm -hmm. regards to Stacky's reality versus numbers. Um, CZ had a huge rise this year. They got their first major win in late 2020, and they just spent 2021 becoming a powerhouse. They spent 2021 winning. not becoming a powerhouse. They spent 2021 winning. I don't think... <laughs> I'm pretty true. sure CZ did not lose a tournament in 2021. This list let, let me rephrase that. Becoming a powerhouse in the terms of consistently <laughs> winning tournaments. Like they <laughs> yeah, won yeah, one yeah. major and then they did not stop winning majors. I think uh CZ... Here's also an important note. Other games got mm -hmm. shafted in this category. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Rip my man OSW. I miss yeah, OSW. I miss my dog. Very big. <laughs> um also like TEC players other than Kazu getting shafted just because of the Tetri representation, which is why it would be good to split mm -hmm. up between game because each game mm -hmm. requires different individual. I talent. think yeah, split game category definitely works, but uh, definitely makes sense. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely makes sense because you see like there's like four, <laughs> there's four Tetri players. Like <laughs> out of the selection, CZ was definitely the best pick, but I wonder what mm -hmm. the people said. I wonder what the people that. said. There we go. Surely, okay. Thirty-five. Dz did win yeah. the popular vote, and that why why Marchim? Also, like very respectable vote for Diao. Um, mm -hmm. Diao's mm -hmm. kind of memorable to me as the first person who kind of like unthroned FS from their yeah their big. But that also wasn't in twenty twenty one. That's just saying how I remember them. And they're still mm -hmm. like very very good player and can be yeah. a lot of top pros. For. For what it's for people who don't know CZ's 2021 career, uh, actually I guess CZ stopped kind of stopped competing after RVB, mm -hmm. but he won not only he won Tetrio Cup two and three, and then he won RVB, and then he came back and he won Jester's Cup fourteen, and then he didn't compete in anything else until 2022. But he also won Caden's Tetrio tournament too. Yeah, with FS and Ajamba. And uh, Kezdebez, Kabuzel, and Promo, and the worst production value known to man. <laughs> That's also a <laughs> TTSD tournament. Yeah. But yeah, uh, as we were talking about in the chat, player of the year, um, probably gonna have, will probably have to be active. Um, mm -hmm. We can't give it to someone who's like very efficient, but they can, they're not competing. They gotta compete. Um, Actually, so, right now, I so think... So it's like based uh, on tourneys for player of the year? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. ZZ is starting to compete again more and more and more. I think this year he played in Tetri Cup 8 and RBB 2 and the one that happened... What what just happened? Tetri Cup 9, that one. <laughs> My own tournament. <laughs> so that's like this already almost as many as last year. And uh, I think he's starting to feel the tournament scene again. Yeah. Hopefully he's getting back mm -hmm. into it and that break helped him out. But uh, this year mm -hmm. should be very interesting, especially uh, with how we might implement these game splits. Be seeing more representation from the other titles. Uh, guaranteeing the next one. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, those were all of the stacky players, except we got verbally mentioned this. VTuber of the year. <laughs> um, <laughs> VTuber which, of the year. Did, which we was even decided have a by a live vote. I think because we forgot to put it on the Google form. <laughs> I think you guys had a slide though. You guys had a slide for sure for it, right? No. We did. It's oh, we did? not in the yeah. podcast graphics. Um, yeah. But the live vote was funny though. Throw up Let like me... a notepad document for our video listeners. I'm gonna look on. Uh, I'm gonna look on our graphics. Uh, the official graphic file. 
Uh, 25 Pi 25 won last year. The statistics for that, only God knows, because I don't know if anyone <laughs> took his green I mean, shot. Yeah. Probably not. I will say, uh, our dear friend of, of Puzzle Kingdom, Selena Virtual Tuber, <laughs> did not get first. Also did not get second. <laughs> so, yeah, I think if... Because there's been debate internally between council members of whether this is a category that will stay. I'm on the fence of with the VTuber activity in the community, it is not feasible for it to exist. There are not enough VTubers for this. There's like there I are, feel like we could There's okay, probably. okay. If you think about it, right? I think it's it's very close to not being enough. But it kinda is enough. I think if it's Selena, enough. If Selena there okay, Selena ish. Uda Radical Cup is two. Mm-hmm. JD. Misa is three. Three Misa, yeah. Uh, these are people I've not heard of. JD okay, Moon. well, you know what? Get on the VTuber grind. Yeah. Maybe I should. <laughs> Get on the VTube grind. <laughs> Maybe uh, this is my problem. Yeah. But I haven't heard of any as a broader enough. community member who doesn't pay attention to this. Excadrill. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, Excadrill, yeah. Yeah, there's... I think there's enough. <clears throat> But yeah, there there probably mm. there probably are enough, and there probably will be more. And I expect over the summer for some of them to rise and make like a larger name. But now let's talk about Stacky's future. Um, things that are going on for the future here. Um, so we plan on adding a few more categories to the show, such as a mm. tournament staffer of the year, because there are a lot of back end people who do not get enough representation in the events. Um. And, uh, as well as a copy pasta of the year category. That's going to be a good meme category. I think cop- copy pasta of the year yeah, has so much, fun. so much potential. So that much potential. So fun. Okay. There have been, there have been so many good copy pastas. I have, I have trouble. I keep a log of all my favorite copy pastas. <laughs> Okay. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The MKO copy pasta cropped up this year. The deep copy little, pasta yeah. cropped up this year. That's the the one. okay, this is kind of a self shell, but the wrench TO copy pasta always <laughs> makes me laugh. Mm. That that one's very funny. There's my, none of my pick for that so far. Um, is uh, if Uya showed it and my girl both oh, were drowned in, one. and I can only save one. <laughs> that's me and my girl's funeral with mushrooms. <laughs> that's a gr- that's a good one, dude. Honest, I'm really excited for uh. For the copy pasta meta to uh to continue evolving, I'm glad that we're we are slowly but surely uh evolving away from the meta of only like one. It's one copy pasta, and it's just like the words are shifted out. There's also like mm-hmm. like UC copy pastas are making a comeback, uh, headed by yours truly for mm-hmm. Cal. <laughs> and um, also uh up and coming or breakout streamer of the year which we kind of talked about when we were talking mm-hmm. about streamer of the year mm-hmm. um just giving a shout out to newer streamers who may not have like a huge established audience those are like so like caboozle or wumbo who are like kind of very well known and active streamers but those who are like just starting up and have made marks on the community in their own right um we're going to have a stacky's website where you can kind of get more info on each individual category mm-hmm. and its nominations mm-hmm. so you get like a better idea of what you're looking at before voting i feel like the reason why caboozled kind of started edging out in a lot of categories is because a google form just a google form can't offer enough information on its own mm-hmm. so we're going to set up a website where you can get more info like watch tournament sets of the year and make your own judgments at all of that stuff um, i think it's also that'd be sick uh, the website was, I think, something that we initially initially planned for it, and then yeah. uh, in the three week time frame that we spent making the stackies actually happen, we didn't have time for it. But now, so, yeah, like we know that the stackies is feasible. We know that people enjoy it. We know that people will watch it, and now we have like we have like six seven months to to make it actually mm-hmm. like look yeah. really really good. And uh, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip the nomination process one because we got a user question I'd like to incorporate mm-hmm. into that. Um, but more skits, uh, as I said, we, we have a lot more time for this. We're gonna mm-hmm. be taking more submissions and stuff from the community to make this a very very fun show to watch. Uh, so again, yeah. if you're funny, if you're interested in producing a skit, we are all ears to the idea and that stuff. 
does have to contact staff members of the parent organizations. Um, skit of the year? Oh, <laughs> skit of the year. That's a good. Can you imagine we we do skit of the year and it's skits from during the, that year? <laughs> <laughs> that would have to be a live vote that we chat. could still that that would be live vote. I think That's we should do it. That's hard to say. Yo, year, I think there, fun. It's not even like, like okay, RBB two had some good skits. Uh, yeah. The, the Ren Renvolution two, which is going to happen. Don't get me wrong. We have we have good plans for that edge. That's <laughs> so gonna true. happen eventually. Uh, that's gonna have skits too. Stacky's twenty twenty one obviously has to have some amount of rep, and we have to represent Stacky's twenty twenty two. Mm hmm. There's yeah, no there'll world. be a lot of voting for that one. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, now on to the brand new questions. Um, the first one is, will there actually be character system reveal in Stacks 2022? <laughs> who knows? Who's to say? You know what? Even, <laughs> even like, if I knew, who, who I'd be under, <laughs> even if I knew I'd be under a funny piece of paper that says I can't tell you. And since I'm not contract, I'll tell you I don't have a funny piece of paper. <laughs> um, and then the next one here, uh, that one was from Azra, by the way. The next one from SSCHR, uh, asking, will next year's stackies contain a dedication to super shocky stacking? Guys, it's just ST stacking. <laughs> 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 super shocky is really good at it, but <laughs> <laughs> this is a thing that has existed since Tetris Battle, or whatever it was called. But Super Shocky is really good at it, and uh, if there are like score related categories or something, I could see Super Shocky making an appearance because they do some really flashy stuff uh, with their stacking. But um, I don't know if a dedication is what I'd use to describe if that would be. <laughs> that would be. Dedication to my mans? And then uh, Quick and Smart asking two questions. How does one become a part of this legendary council? Uh, there's not, it's not going to be an open thing this year. Like it kind of was last year. Um, it will just be, um, private invites, basically, it basically private, invites. Is private invites, yeah. communities uh, that are considered major, mm -hmm. get their leader and an invitee decided by their leader. Yeah. Because, uh, each, uh, community is kind of based upon teams at this point. Uh, so you, you get a leader get and a plus one, or you get yeah. your two leaders in the case mm -hmm. of like, so like one example, ob like obvious example, Team TSG is, mm -hmm. is yeah. just going to be me and Jen. Uh, PK will probably be you and, and Mooser. Yeah. Edge. And then uh, we have, I think there are six organizations so far. We might have one more, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And then another one uh, saying, it, are the nominees that get selected in the first place chosen by the council as well which goes into this point about how nominations will be more rigorous um the, what we uh toyed around with for the nomination process is we'll take open nominations for categories people will submit who they think they want to be in via twitter or forum or whatever then the council will go through these options we'll like fact check everyone we'll screen all the content and from there, since we're major community leaders and major figures, we decide based on that um, what would be influential and mm -hmm. uh, what would kind of fit the bill. Because the community's got good nominations. We just need to kind of narrow it down. Um, separate show for the nomination results is a very interesting idea. I don't think that there would be... And I, I don't think there'd be anything against that. It would drive more hype to the main event. We'll see what happens, would be my answer for that. Based on how we finalize the nomination process anyway. Uh, hold on, hold on. Let's get out of himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we had another question come in. Uh, I saw someone was typing. Someone was typing. They, did, they stopped typing, sadly. But, but uh, uh, yeah. I think that might actually wrap up our episode now, mm -hmm. though. Got through all these questions. I just want to say thank you all for tuning in to this first episode of the podcast. We had so many people tune in here live and uh, sticking through the unfortunate technical issue. So I really appreciate you all coming from that. Um, within the next week or two, our second episode should be announced. I know we probably stayed this, but these are bi-weekly. Every other Tuesday, we're a great Tuesday rumble tournament from Puyo Tower is not occurring. 
you'll be seeing this podcast. Is that how we're doing this? Oh, that makes so yes. much sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are the main not, show hosts? I did not <laughs> consider that at all. But yeah, and also oh, one so thing smart. I might not emphasize is that Renj and I will be your weekly hosts for this. Yes, yes. Uh, and then we'll bring on guests guess. as needed. But uh, Sir <laughs> Sheep and Duel is a star. We'll be rating them for Twitch. For the VOD viewers, thank you all for tuning and listening to this After Effect um audio listeners yeah. as well we will also be publishing this to audio platforms and uh youtube after the fact so stay tuned for now for that if you've missed some of this wait for those if you enjoy the audio better it will probably be coming out within a day or two after the live show we'll be pushing that so mm -hmm. we'll see you all uh in two weeks from now for another great episode we've been cooking up some great content for this behind the scenes some good ideas some good people to invite onto the show um and hopefully it's a, it's this a good be vibe a fun, fun i've gone from from being a sam pocket on around the block to being sam pocket on this <laughs> and that's the vibe that i like to live on let's so, go see you guys in two weeks have a good one yep so see y'all have fun oh seven